Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray, brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Oh, no, no, that is not my stomach abrupting right now. That is the sound of spring. Hey, listen, some, listen you're still going over there, you know? Would you shut the door, Charlie? Two of them just came in. Okay. I'll run the next. All right. Well, we're going to talk to a hen here. Okay. We're going to talk to the first lady of hunting, the hen, right now when it comes to hunting. And uh, that's our good friend. uh, Are you ready to talk about this, Brenda Valentine? You know I am. Ah, she's ready. She's ready. It's uh, (laughs) turkey time. And we got Brenda off her horse earlier in the week talking to her about uh, getting ready to be on this show on this Saturday morning. And, uh, one of our favorite guests. Let's talk a little turkey hunting with Brenda. Now, Brenda, I know that you're you're a person who who loves the outdoors. You love a lot of the pursuits. Where would you rank turkey hunting in your loves? Oh my goodness! In the springtime, it's number one. Okay. Uh, it, it's a hard decision between uh, deer and turkey, and I'm just tickled to death that they're not during the same time. So, <laughs> in the springtime, turkey is number one. Well, I know, I, I know. Uh, Bill Cooksey is here, and Bill, Bill said uh, you you love turkey because it's in between ducks, so you got a little break well, in there. Yeah, you, we don't have any conflicts. You don't have any no conflict, conflict other than I, crappie fishing. Crappie but, fishing. But, but I thought you crop, might we say we can get in some crappie I fishing. I hear a lot of people that have a toss up in fishing, but uh, for me, it's all about the turkey. Well, we, we, you're, you're first lady of hunting. You couldn't say first lady of hunting who likes to fish, too. You know, I mean, you are the first. You got the spot there, girl. You <laughs> you got you got to follow through on this. Yep. But uh, why? Well, go, go ahead. Uh, something else that you failed to mention, but I'm a national spokesperson for the National Wild Turkey Federation. I was so getting ready. Say, that should tell you something right there. Well, you, you beat me to the punch again, Brenda. You know, oh. I mean, it's, it's right there on my notes. First uh, national spokesman. And, and, and I know these guys in this room here, uh, I know I have spent a lot of time walking the aisles at the NWTF. Uh, I, I wish, just wished it, that I could talk to people in Memphis to, to not schedule it on the same, their boat show on the same weekend as the uh, Turkey Federation in Nashville because yeah. I think it would help a lot. But uh, what does that uh, mean for you to be that, that the, the national spokesman? Well, you know, I thought about this quite a bit before I accepted that that uh-huh. job title. But for me, the uh, National Wild Turkey Federation is not nearly as much about turkeys as it is about people. And uh, it makes me proud. I go to an event almost every week. Yeah, you do. And at every event, they, uh, you know, they say the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes. And they honor <laughs> veterans. And yes. they, they say they bless their food, and <laughs> you know there's there's a standard that the NWTF goes by, and their mission statement is you know preserve and and uh, uh, the wild turkey, but also yes. to uh, preserve our hunting traditions, and so they've taken a stand on on the gun control thing and on taking our kids hunting and opening up more public land for hunting access. So, you know, all of those things are really important to me. So I'm really proud to to speak up for the NWTF because it stands for the things that I believe in. And not only that, I, I know you, uh, you want to see more youth involved in anything. Um, get them out into the woods. And I know the guys that are with us here in the studio today, uh, we've already talked about uh, Steve Reynolds. He's already bopped out those nine grandkids. He had to get that in there before we ever had the show started just about. (laughs) And, uh, you know, and grandkids are important and things like that. But uh, Steve Turpin's here also from Turpin Game Calls. I got one of his calls. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's got that uh, yelper around his neck right there and uh, was making that noise. That uh, I've got one of those yelpers, too. That's and, not uh, a noise. It's, an, it's not mean, a that it's, sweet it's, music. That's not noise. Well, I don't mean it as a noise or anything <laughs> like that, but uh, it, it's uh, one of those things that uh, happened. Uh, I, 
Whose phone is that? I think Who's it's phone? mine. I think it's mine. Oh, man. I, I, <laughs> the one you left in the car. Yes, the one I left in the car. You know, that's just my wife reminding me to bring the milk home when I come. I'm sure it is <laughs> and everything like that. But uh, again, well yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we let you go, uh, so tell us uh, what about uh, do you get do you enjoy getting ready for turkey season and, and things like that? Because I know uh, uh, it's it's one of those times that I get ex- uh, excited about. How about you? Well, if it tells you anything, my vest has been laying in the living room floor with stuff <laughs> spread out. You know, I, I go, I dump everything out, and I go through, and and the kitchen table has been full of calls because you know the, the, I'll have I don't know twelve, fifteen, or twenty, and I'll yelp on every one of them, use them all, and then I cull them down every day. I pitch one out because you know no way do I need that many or will use that many or want to tote that many. But it's just this uh, process I go through every year, and then I look like I need a pack mule when I hit the woods. But by the end of the season, I've got tired of carrying so much, and I whittle it down to where I've just got, you know, one pot call, one box call, and two or three strikers. But I'll start out with a bunch. But, yes, the getting ready is a big thing. In fact, I've got decoys in the middle of the floor and all the best <laughs> and everything. And, uh, I mean – no, if you if you're not going to warm up for the season, then you're not too excited over it. The way I feel about it, I think you're ready. I think you've got me pumped up here, Brenda. <laughs> thank you, girl. Appreciate you being on as always. Have a great hunt, and we'll talk down the road. Okay. It's always my pleasure. Thank you for thank you. Me. Good good job. All right, Brenda Valentine. Let's switch from Brenda over to uh, young man Jason Burden. He is a pro staff with our good friend Alec Rutledge Outdoors. Good morning, Jason. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me and giving me this opportunity. Well, thanks. Uh, anybody recommended by Alex is fine with me, you know, and well, uh, he's one of the best when it comes to uh, not only living his life out the right way, but uh, faith, family, and friends. I think that's what uh, he's always had that motto, and uh, you guys uh, have followed that. Tell our listeners a little bit about because I know you uh, uh, live in West uh, Western Kentucky. Where do you live close to? Uh, I'm about halfway between Owensboro, Kentucky, and Bowling Green, Kentucky. So I'm kind of right in the middle there. If you, anybody's familiar with either one of those towns, uh, are there any turkeys there? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was driving down the road today, and there was two birds blowed up in a field with See, that's hens. It. And yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, bu- I, bu- I bumped the horn, and uh, they shot gobbled to the horn. I I, I couldn't hear it because I was driving down the road, but I could just see them on neck stretch out and hear them gobble. I see them yeah. gobble. So when Jason, does, I, I've got a question. All right, you just said that. Now, Jason, how old are you? I'll be 40 years old in July. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm just going to say you're probably in your 20s because my answer, somebody said, are there a lot of turkeys around there, is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Uh, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like the deer. Uh, K- Kentucky is, is getting very popular and, and more popular, it seems like, every year with the deer hunting and people from out of state coming here. And, oh, and yeah. it's good for the state. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, some of the locals don't like it so much, but, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. And, uh, but we, we are blessed. We have a, a lot of deer, a lot of turkey, and we have a lot of elk in the eastern part of the state. Well, you know, don't get me into that because I've, I've, uh, I put my name in the hat every year since we started elk season. I think I'm probably going to get drawn about two weeks before I die. You know, that's what well, it's going to be. I've drawn, you know? I've, <laughs> I've, I've I've drawn a tag two out of the last three years. Wow. Well, we can cut Jason off now, okay? <laughs> we've, heard, we've heard enough from him. We'll just let him just go on out of there. But, uh, no, so when does Kentucky open? When does your season open? Uh, it's usually mid, mid-April. mid Okay, uh, all right. Yours a little bit later than ours. And, of course, Mississippi opens. Uh, it has to frost before Mississippi opens. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and Alabama's open right now. Matter of fact, I'll be in Alabama uh, here in the next few days. So really? Alabama's there, open? Actually, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll be hunting with Alex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. In Alabama, of course, Alabama, uh, it's always open for deer season down there. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it to me. I mean, it goes a hundred days, and people still keep on going down there and everything. But uh, tell us a little bit about your career and uh, how you got into it. Well, I've been, uh, you know, born and raised up on the river, uh, doing a lot of catfishing and uh, and the and Green River hunting and yeah. and uh, the Green River, yes, and. Uh, and uh, really enjoyed that. Grew up, live out in the country. I'm a farm boy. I live on the farm. We've got sheep and cattle and different things. Me and my wife. I have four kids. And uh, Ooh, you know, uh, okay. I, I kind of got in. 
I know one more, and I'll have a ball team. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, it depends on what sport you're talking about, okay? A basketball team. I okay. it's, 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 it's March Madness. Uh, in, okay, in seven Haiti, more in the United States football so. team, but uh, no. Uh, but but uh, uh, I got in the outdoor industry, I guess when I was in college, uh, you know, as far as getting in the industry, and, and a buddy of mine, uh, you was talking about, it was funny, you was talking about the NWTF show with Miss Brenda. Yeah. Uh, they, they took me to the convention. I'd never been and uh, didn't really know what it was about, and I Whoa. think I've missed one year since. So I've been the last 17 out of the last 18 years I've been, and uh, have been a big part of it. You know, I've worked for some major call companies and decoy companies, uh, either pro staff or sales or different things, and and that's kind of how I met Alex, and then I got to follow Alex, and it was weird how we met. We met actually on social media and just kind of got to talking back and forth, and, and since then it's just uh, – I keep telling him every time we're together that God put us together because, uh, you know, for a reason he has plans for us because it's, uh, it's, it's just something I can't explain. And he can't explain it either, but we've become best friends. Uh, you know, I've stayed at his cabin in Missouri several times and, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's something about our relationship. And then we've started up American roots outdoors, which yes, is just, right. uh, you yeah. know, growing, growing really good. Well, tell our listeners out there how they can get in touch with, uh, more information about, uh, what you just mentioned with Alex. Yeah, check us out on Facebook, American Roots Outdoors with Alex Rutledge. Give us a like. Give us a share. We're trying to build our numbers and, and get our fan base built up there. And then also our website is AmericanRootsOutdoors.com. Uh, check Love it out. Name. Give our sponsors a thanks. You know, we've got Hornady, Lacrosse, uh, Hex. Uh, you know, we've got some uh, our ARO calls. We've got our own line of calls that we've come out with that, that we're producing and selling. And uh, just just help us out here a little bit. And anybody that knows Alex is uh, in the, he's been around the industry a long time. And Alex is uh, well liked. And he sure and, is. And I understand why. Yeah, he's a man of God. Uh, we really appreciate Jason. Thank you. It's hard to follow Brendan Valentine. I know that. But uh, you can always say that you followed the first lady of hunting. You did good, too. It did. And when I seen the itinerary for this interview, I said, i got to follow her. And then when I was listening <laughs> to her a while ago, I said, well, this is going to be hard to follow, no, but I'll give it a try. You gave it a great try. Thank you, buddy. You tell Alex hello for us, okay? Thank, thank you. God bless. All right. All right. All right. Now, what are we going to do right now? I love it. I love it. We'll be right back on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Hold it down now. Hold it down. We'll be right back. <laughs> 